Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from yesterday's Aim Chess US Rapid Preliminaries. It's Jordan Van Forest versus Young Shisto Duda and uh, it's a game that's uh, kind of reminiscent of the of the uh, Rubinstein Immortal game and if you haven't seen it do check it out. I will also put a link to that in the description below. It will be the first thing you will see uh, but also as Duda is Polish I will also include the link to the Polish Immortal. So do check out those two videos if you guys uh, already haven't because the games are quite quite impressive. And as far as Rapid Chess goes this is as good as it gets so without further ado let's check it out uh fun forest with the white pieces opens with d4 uh we have knight to f6 by duda we have c4 that's not a c4 we have c4 e6 uh knight to f3 and now d5 we have bishop to g5 and bishop to g7 so just a uh nice queen's gambit declined with e3 uh, and now h6 asking do you want to retreat do you want to capture on f6 uh, Jordan captures and now Bishop captures on f6. We have knight to c3 and black castles. Uh, and now usually you want to develop your pieces here with uh, queen to, uh, rook to c1, queen c2, maybe bishop to d3. Uh, but uh, this is a modern chess and in modern chess we, we push the h pawn. So here uh, we have h4 uh, and Duda replies in a very principled manner. Uh, your opponent attacks on the king side, you will uh, counterattack in the center. So c5. Uh, and now g4, preparing to push that g5, and if uh, black makes a um, slow move, then g5 is definitely coming, but you could maybe play it, for example, if knight c6, uh, then white plays g5, and uh, well, it's uh, it's just a mess, so maybe not going for that. So here we have the immediate C captures on D4, E captures on D4, and now, uh, now Duda is considering whether to continue developing or to start defending on the king side. And this is one such moment where maybe you, you continue developing, but uh, it's, uh, it's a rapid game, so I guess anything goes. Uh, if knight to C6, which was not played in the game, uh, then we allow g5, captures, 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 and now after queen captures, we can play queen d3. We threaten checkmate, and then we can defend, not with g6, because then you allow ideas like queen h3, but we'll, we'll play f5, and then you don't really care about queen h3, because you always have king to f7. But here, by playing g6 right away, uh, you uh, you merely create a weakness in, in your own camp. So here, uh, Jordan attacks with g5, with h captures, h captures, bishop back to g6 seven and now queen to d2 uh the strongest idea the the, the idea is queen to f4 to, to h4 and then at some point you will be able to, to reach that h7 square but it's never uh, really happening because the rook can always move and you can never touch the h8 square due to the bishop the bishop is an excellent defending piece here but maybe you can you know throw a knight to e5 at some point and then maybe black will have to give up his bishop so a lot of attacking opportunities here for white we have knight to c6 and now we have queen side castles here if you rush with queen to f4 um you don't uh, you don't really have a way of um, figuring out how, how to go about this for example if queen to a5 uh, we already said that this plan is is no good because the uh, black will just move the rook and uh, once you deliver check king f8 and there's no continuing the attack so here uh, jordan first uh, starts by queen uh, castling queen side we have rook to e8 uh, and now comes rook to h4 again not interested in this queen to f4 idea even though it's a it's a fine square for the queen uh, but okay uh, rook to h4 now the rook also uh, adds more protection to, to the d4 pawn and you can maybe develop the bishop play the other rook to h1 if if you uh, will want to uh, double up on the on the h file uh, we have a6 now uh, controlling the b5 square and now comes king to b1 getting the king away from that uh, op uh, c file that's about to open up we have d captures on c4 bishop captures and now duda finally opens up the position with e5 and now what do you do here well there are uh, a, a couple of very interesting ideas uh, one for such is d5 where both players would just get a nice pass pawn for example if knight d4 we're going to play knight captures e captures now white has a pass d pawn black has a pass d pawn and and now, even if knight to e4, we can even capture this. Captures, captures, bishop to f5, we attack the rook here, the rook cannot move, and uh, it, it would be a, a fine game for both sides. But here we have queen to c2 by Jordan, uh, going for that queen captures on g6, as the f pawn uh, is pinned, you will not be able to capture, but uh, he... Uh, uh, allows a bishop to f5 and this is just no fun for white now uh, so here we have knight to e4 
uh, blocking this and now e captures on d4. Uh, we have king to a1, getting the king away from this uh, nasty diagonal, uh, and now comes d3 by Duda. You could also play rook to c8, also uh, a nice idea as the queen is on the c file, but this way uh, you are preparing knight to b4. So whatever captures here, you're still going to go knight to b4 and attack both the queen and the piece on d3. So here rook captures on d3, and now comes knight to b4, attacking the queen and the rook, and you can't trade queens here because if you trade queen a uh, knight captures queen on c2 with check king to b1 we're gonna capture on d8 and after king captures here we just deliver a check here and now you're uh, you, you either have to pick it up with the rook or you have to move the king uh, and then you lose the knight as well so you're gonna be completely busted here uh, so after knight to b4 uh, uh, when four uh, uh, tries a uh, bishop captures on f7 with check uh, and now what do you play here uh, well the correct thing to do is play king to f8 maybe as this is rapid chess, uh, but uh, this runs into queen to c5 check, and then as black's queen is still under attack, you can move the queen, defend your knight, and it's uh, kind of fine here. If bishop captures on e8, we're going to capture on c5, knight captures here, knight captures on d3, and if knight captures on d3, we're going to play rook captures on d8, and we get this position where the material is uh, uh, better for white, but it's black who's, uh, well, almost winning here. The bishop pair is completely fully operational, uh, the rook is just a monster here on the e file and it's going to be very very hard for white to defend this however in the game duda played king captures on f7 and this is a bit different because black now has to give up the queen we have queen to c4 with check uh, and what do you play now uh, well, we have rook to e6, and now Duda is offering a full queen here. But uh, there are a lot of a lot of pieces waiting to, uh, to be captured after that queen is off the board. So rook captures on d8. It's the only good move for white. We have rook captures on d8. Now Duda is threatening checkmate here after the queen blocks, of course. Uh, and you have to defend this. And the one way to do it is queen to b3, uh, which you know. It may or may not be good. The other one is rook to h1, which is not not so good. Uh, so here, uh, well, you just start gobbling up pieces. We have bishop captures on e4. Now the knight cannot move. Uh, and queen captures on b4. And now if you want to capture the knight, uh, well, you run into queen to f4 check. And now it's going to be a bit of a problem defending this position. It's queen and rook against two rooks and the bishop. Uh, white should have enough resources to, you know, at least get a, some sort of a perpetual here. Uh, uh, so you have to be very careful and here Duda plays the only winning move and that's rook to d3. Now you attack the, the knight twice, you're now ready to capture it, so queen to f4 will not be winning uh, anything back after this check is delivered. So rook to e1, white really without any any good moves uh, and now bishop captures on f3. Uh, we have queen to f4 with check, king to g8 and now again uh, there, there's no good way to continue this. If queen to b8 check, king to h7, we can deliver one more check, but bishop to h5 and everything is perfectly fine for black. So after king to g8, we have queen to c4, uh, but now Duda simply attacks the queen. Okay, the, uh, so bishop to, and uh, sorry, uh, of course, you can never capture here because this is always checkmate. Uh, forgot to mention this. But yeah, queen to c4 now with a uh, double attack on the rook, but just bishop to d5. And now queen to c8 check, we have king to h7, seven uh, and uh, well just what do you play here yeah you can never capture again because just rook to d1 checkmate you have to move the rook otherwise rook captures any one will be checkmate so here rook to b1 is played and now uh, what do you play here? Well, uh, Duda starts with the rook to e2. And now look at this. Uh, this rook attacking here, bishop attacking here, bishop attacking here. Uh, there's nothing white can do. But uh, the move that uh, uh, Jordan made allows Duda to finish the game uh, in, in the, the greatest of styles. Uh, he played queen to c1. And now, of course, you will pause the video and try to find this spectacular move for Duda. Uh, it's actually a forced mate in 8, but only the first move matters. Uh, so well, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, just unstoppable uh, idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to a3. 
rook to a3 and it was in this position on move 32 that Jordan van Forest resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, it's such a such an ugly position for white that the, the bishop cannot capture, uh, the, the pawn cannot capture the rook due to the bishop here. Uh, you can't move anything, you can't defend the rook captures here will, will just be checkmate and there, there, there's really nothing you can do here. You can play some silly moves but uh, other than that there, there's no stopping this. So just a spectacular idea and uh, well congratulations to, to do that on this uh, amazing amazing game. Uh, so like I said, if you still haven't, do check out Rubinstein's Immortal. It kind of features a, a similar bishop pair, a similar queen sacrifice. So if you enjoyed this game, you will definitely enjoy this one. Uh, it's the first link in the description below. And also check out the Polish Immortal, uh, the second link in the description below. Uh, so once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, Vlad Laru, Mark Thompson, Annie McCain, and Emon Legavardi for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to check out the standings uh, as the preliminaries are now over. Uh, so, uh, sorry about that. We're just going to have to make it a little bit smaller. So these are the standings. Uh, to the left are the people who qualified for the main event and to the right, uh, well, are the people that did not. The winner of the preliminaries is Vladislav Artemiev uh, with 10.5 points, followed by Magnus Carlsen with 10, Levon uh, and Alireza with 9.5 uh, Wesley and Mamedyarov with 9, uh, and Yang Shishtoduda with 9, and Linear Dominguez with 8 points. And the people who have not qualified, Anish Giri, Maxim Vashel Grav, uh, Vidit Gujarati, Daniel Naroditsky, Lekwang Liam, uh, Jordan Van Forest, uh, Eric Hansen, and Wander Liang. So we're going to be covering the main event as well. And if you have any of your favorite games from the preliminaries, also do check out, uh, do use hashtag suggestion, and I will go through your um, uh, suggestion. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this very nice tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.